My father mentioned to me when I started in real estate, it's all about just being able to walk down the street and hold your head high and never have to worry about who you're gonna run into. We'll serve you so well. Hi everyone, Jeff Moxham here with another solo episode of the Moxham Mindset. Thanking you all for your support. Again, it's been a wonderful journey so far and uh, getting more and more excited and interested in doing these episodes and interviewing my subjects. Quick update, Moxham Commercial been about a month now and uh, just pulling my head and shoulders out of setting up the business and uh, just starting to list our first few properties. Listed a DA approved site in Arncliff for 41 units and a few more coming and we've listed about three properties for lease in the uh, South Sydney precinct. So um, yeah, excited to be getting back into the uh, sales and leasing and property world. As many of you may know, I was very lucky that the wonderful Renee uh, came across with me to set up the new business. Absolute godsend. She's been amazing in uh, taking a lot of the setup processes off my hands. We have hired our first staff member, uh, Michael Hatz, in sales and leasing role. Super excited to have Michael on board. He's already listed three properties and really interested in growing the business. So if there's anyone out there that's interested in real estate, is new or experienced, really keen to um, have the have some discussions with you and uh, see if there's a fit. So uh, stay tuned on further updates for Moxham Commercial. So today's episode is dedicated to the agents. I'm calling it the agents episode. As you know, I've been in the business for 25 years. There's a lot I've learned. This is the third business that I've set up in the last eight years. Loved absolutely every second of all of it. Very lucky that real estate is my thing and I've got lots to share. Turned 50 last week and uh, I'm really interested in sharing with my community what I've learned over my period. I I do get asked a fair bit, um, in particularly since I've started the podcast, by agents reaching out to me, um, asking questions, um, you know, coaching and mentoring type tips, which is really lovely and uh, I really enjoy sharing it. So that's what today's episode is dedicated to. The first tip that I'll give anybody wanting to enter the commercial real estate world is find yourself an experienced agent or business owner to work with for a good couple of years, minimum a year, maybe 18 months. The the period in commercial, different to residential, the period in commercial to really start getting some track record and some deals and some trust and building relationships is is a bit longer. I, I think it's it's look, it cup can be a couple of years depending on how you start and what age you are at um, and how mature you are. People in in commercial, it takes you know a little bit longer to sort of develop the trust required and have the relationships in place to be, you know, selling, you know, complicated and and sort of large commercial assets. So the best way to learn, it's almost like an apprenticeship or a cadetship. Find yourself a business owner, find yourself an experienced agent. Most importantly, someone that is interested in showing you the ropes and someone that is interested in watching you grow. And that's really the best way to learn. I have had agents that have come in and with little experience and wanted to go straight into a full sales role, said, no problem. If you think you can do it, go for it. I interestingly had an agent start going straight into a sales role and then one also starting sort of in a an assistant sales associate type role. The difference in the two of those agents in two years, yeah, it was sort of was was night and day. The agent that sort of had glued themselves to a senior agent, that was actually myself versus the agent that sort of started with little experience and went straight into it. The difference in those two agents in two years' time was very, very different. There are a lot of different areas of commercial. So once you've sort of dipped your toe in the water into the commercial markets and you understand the different areas. So there's industrial, there's retail, there's commercial office, there's development sites, there's, 
and then there's other sort of sub sectors like childcare, health, accommodation and hotels, retirement. And some of these sectors sort of cross over, asset management. You've got to have a bit of an understanding of those areas. And that's why the apprenticeship slash cadetship type scenario is really good because you can get a bit of a feel for everything and work out what you're most passionate about. You've got to be passionate about what you do. That obviously helps you be more and more successful. In the agency field for commercial, you can do sales, you can do leasing, or you can do a bit of a combination of both. In the sales world, it's always best to specialize in a certain class, a certain asset class, or a certain geographical area. So there's a couple of different areas in the sales world for commercial. You can specialize in an asset class, for example, you can specialize in industrial, you can specialize in retail, you can specialize in office, or you can do a bit of everything, which is what my business has always been, which is what's called the metropolitan and regional markets. So my business and where I have specialized is really been drawn by my relationships. So my business goes where the relationships come from. So I'll list and sell things in Goulburn, I'll list and think, sell things in Newcastle, Wollongong, and pretty much everywhere in between. You can also become what's called a geographical expert. So you focus on a pure particular area. It might be city fringe, might be eastern suburbs, it might be western Sydney, or, you know, inner west. And then you become the expert of that area. If you can do sales and leasing, fantastic in those areas, because what's good about doing sales and leasing is that say if sales are slow, then leasing, you know, they can sort of, they can complement each other. So in terms of the commercial sales world in agency, you could do sales only, you can do leasing, you can do a bit of both. Depends obviously what you're really interested in and what area you're interested in dominating. I'm what's called, I'm a relationship agent. So I don't specify in a specific asset class or a specific geographical region. My market is really New South Wales wide and my listings and my business comes from where my relationships have the business and the opportunities. Separate to that, you can be a geographical expert. So you might focus on a region or, or an area, eastern suburbs, inner west, western Sydney. And then if you were to focus on a geographical area, it's all about being the absolute expert in your area of choice. If you're in the East and you want to specify in the East, you want to be the agent that people think of when they think of anything to do with commercial sales in Double Bay or Rose Bay or Bondi or Bondi Junction. Typically, that is is an area that agents will specialise in or city fringe. So it's, you know, commercial office leasing and building sales in the city fringe, such as, you know, Surrey Hills, Camperdown, Glebe, that sort of thing. It's all about creating value. You want to be the agent that people think of when they think of those areas. I think, look, I'll just ring Jeff or I'll just ring so-and-so because I want some information about that area. And the more calls you're getting like that is obviously the better. The other area in commercial agency sales is specializing in an asset class. So you might have a real passion for retail and that can be shopping centers, or that can be street level retail in mixed use buildings. And you want to be recognized as the agent that absolutely knows everything about retail. Like there's a couple of agents in Sydney CBD, one in particular that just dominates the retail space for Sydney CBD. The more you dominate, obviously, the more value you create, the more you're like the attraction agent for that space. That's what you want to be. You want to be the attraction agent for your specific space. Another area would be institutional office buildings. Much longer gestation period to get into the bigger transactions, what they call capital markets, which is, for example, you know, $100 million plus um, asset classes like uh, commercial office buildings. So a lot longer to get in it, less deals, but 
bigger fees. So commercial office uh, investments is another area. Then there's industrial. You might want you might want to be the agent that absolutely specialises in industrial. And again, you just want to be known as that agent that somebody calls whenever they think of industrial. One of the things that I really wanted to touch on today that is important, not just in real estate, but I think in anything that you do. And one thing I've been sort of very passionate about in recent years and learning more and more about, it's just, it's all about your mindset. It doesn't really matter what it is that you want to do. You just need to be absolutely living and breathing internally and externally, the area that you want to specialize in. You've got to have a plan absolutely got to have a plan, just like getting in the car and putting the address in Google Maps. You can't get to where you're going without having an idea of where it is you want to go. In sales in particularly, and, and you know, having targets, and we all want to make, you know, lots of commission, and we all want to do big deals. And that's, you know, let's face it, that's why we're here. We do love what we do, but you know we want to be um, handsomely rewarded for it. Anything to do with sales, I find, is even more to do with mindset. You need to really, really believe that you can achieve what you want. You've got to believe it right from deep within. And the more you believe yourself in achieving your targets, the more it will come to you and it will be much easier. It's the same as professional sports people. It's no different. The Olympic athlete that visualizes every moment of the race from the starting blocks to going through the ribbon at the end, visual, visualization is just massive. And you can read thousands of books, look at so much stuff on YouTube in various industries. And it's all about seeing yourself achieve. And just from the moment you get up in the morning to when you go to bed at night, that's all you think about. You don't think about the failure. You don't think about the risks. Yes, you, they might pop into your mind, but you quickly shut them out. And it's just focusing on the success, visualizing the success. And the more and more you are aware of what you're thinking, the easier it becomes. I mean, let's face it, if we have got bad habits in our thought processes, we all do. They've taken a long time to be created in our minds. So they also actually take a fair bit of work to change. A little, you know, experiment you might do with yourself is have a think about what you think about. Is it positive? Are you thinking about what you want or are you coming from a fearful place of, oh, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. What if this happens? What if that happens? That's cool. We all do it. I think the, the real key is just being aware of that. And you 100%, all of the successful people in whatever industries, they all have ups and down thoughts. The key to the real super successful people and the Olympic athletes and all the world champions is, yep, they're aware of when they get off track, back on track. That's huge. For the agents wanting to get into the sales industry and commercial, for the agents that are already in sales, the sales industry, um, I wanted to talk about expression of interest and why EOI has a bad name and what we can do collectively as agents to make it a more welcomed method of sale. When I say more welcomed, yes, we all do lots of EOI. There are a lot of clients out there and purchasers that don't like participating in EOIs because they've been burnt and they've been run badly and they haven't been treated well. A lot of people have a negative feeling about EOIs. So the younger listeners um, and for listeners that aren't experienced in commercial property, EOI stands for expression of interest. So when we're marketing property, we'll either sell it via auction, via EOI, or via tender. Very rarely will we do something just via private treaty. So expression of interest is different to auction in that at auction, they turn up and bid at auction, and EOI is they turn up with a letter of offer or an offer in writing and they submit it to the agent. Process then is a short listing of the best offers to then hopefully pick a purchaser and transact. 
And there's a lot of tools and tips that I use and want my agents to use through that process that ensures the purchaser feels like they've had absolutely every opportunity to purchase a property. So if you put yourself in their shoes, they're submitting, they're throwing in an offer in writing into the ether as far as they're concerned. They're feeling, well, I'm just waiting for the agent to call me. So they're really relying on that agent's, you know, trustworthiness and they're relying on that agent to do the right job. What can happen and what sometimes is you speak to purchasers that have participated in AOIs, I don't want to do another AOI, why is that? Well, I submitted my offer and the agent didn't ring me for a week and then he just rang me and said it was sold. Absolutely 101 of how EOIs should not be run and that's why they have a bad name. The reason why we'll use EOI versus auction is sometimes if there's a complicated property and it's we can't submit a contract to somebody that's clear and simple for them to sign at auction and there's a number of things that we might need to negotiate in the EOI, um, settlement terms, there might be complications with the asset, there might be a whole lot of leases, there might be a number of things that require negotiation or there might be some areas of opportunity in the property that would benefit the owner to be able to sit down and talk about the offers and say, well, if we did this, what about this? Or if we did this versus something that's very straightforward with auction where you can just turn up and it's a simple asset and it's you know just like a, like a home is, is nice and simple. So in commercial, there's simple assets and there's complicated assets. EOI really works for complicated assets. So that's why we use EOI and that's why it has a bad name. What we need to do as an agent community, I really think is make sure every EOI that's submitted, there's huge amounts of communication with that purchaser from the day they submit the offer to when they're either told they're successful or not. And I think the more we can all do that, the better for the method of sale. If you're a new agent starting out, you've got to align yourself with an experienced agent. And not just an experienced agent, but an experienced agent that is willing and happy and motivated to help you and to grow you. What I say to my agents in EOIs is any agent can run a marketing campaign, any agent can get a whole lot of offers. On the close of the EOI date, what happens from EOI close to stage one to stage two, even if there's stage three, sometimes there's multiple stages, sometimes there's not. Communication with your buyers from the moment they put their offer in to the moment they either are successful or not successful is so important every day. You've got to put yourself in their shoes. They're submitting an offer just into the ether, 100% solely relying on the agent to do the right thing. Not like turning up at an auction where they can see it, they can feel it, they have complete control over when and where and how much they put another bid in and they have complete control as to whether they buy the property on that day in auction. With EOI, if you put yourself in their shoes, they're throwing in an offer, and they're really, they're, they're hoping that the agent's gonna do the right thing, the agent is going to keep them informed and give them every opportunity to purchase the property, which is how it should be. I say to my agents, a real test to running a good EOI is if it's, same with auction actually, is if this property is hotly contested, and the underbidder in the EOI that misses out, and they really wanted it, their temperament in talking to you once you've told them they missed out is the test to how well you have run your EOI. They have to have the feeling that it was absolutely, they had every opportunity to purchase it, not you ringing them a week later and say, oh, sorry, it's sold. And they're like, well, hang on, where was, how, you know, I didn't have the opportunity. They've got to feel same as they feel like in an auction room where they had absolutely every opportunity and it's, you know, in the EOI, it's like, you sure? It's going to, you know, et cetera, et cetera, put in your best shot. They need to be able to still have absolute, well, they need to be able to have absolute trust in that agent post EOI. So that's a test. If you're a new agent starting out, you've got to align yourself with an experienced agent. And not just an experienced agent, but an experienced agent that is willing 
and happy and motivated to help you and to grow you because this process is not in a textbook. It's, I mean, I've got basic steps of, of what happens, but every scenario is different. So you need to be able to sit down with that agent and go through the process with, with him or her 10 or 15, 20 times and see all the different scenarios and how you do it because they're all different. So it's about being with someone that's happy to share their knowledge or with a company that's really invested in helping their, you know, the, the younger agents. One of the differences between residential and commercial, and this is uh, a great tip to agents coming into commercial, is look, like anything, business is about relationships. I think in commercial, more and more than uh, in residential, for example, that your relationships with your clients are so, so, so important. Another big tip, for younger agents coming into commercial. And really this is just a tip for business in general, I suppose. It is all about your relationships and having the right intentions to really want to serve your clients. I, I mentioned before about, um, about being an agent of value. You want to be that agent that people ring for advice. You want to be the trusted advisor. Such a it's a it's a quoted term, but it's so important and so true. And you've got to do it for the right reasons. You've got to want to help. You know that, that I, I suppose that's that's one of the big differences in sales is what Tom Panos has a favourite saying: commission breath. You don't want to have commission breath. This is a long term game, and you've got to focus on your relationships. You have great relationships with clients in commercial, you might do two, three, four deals with one client in one year. You know, might do a leasing deal, you might manage their property, you might sell a development side and get the project marketing. It's the, the I think the, the fruits of having the right intent around your relationships and really wanting to help will really benefit you in commercial. And I think the great thing about commercial is you really have to have you know, a smaller group of clients than you do in residential because the trading of, you know, various assets in various asset classes is much more frequent. So my next tip is on the all important and probably is it the most important thing in real estate, in business in general, the subject of work ethics. A couple of areas of work ethics. Firstly, and most importantly, you've got to do the right thing. Always do the right thing, no matter what. You might lose a deal here. That client will never, ever forget you and you will have their business ongoing. And I was with an agent friend the other day and we were talking about the importance of this. He's a business owner as well. And we we're talking about the importance of having the right people in your business that will always do the right thing. My father mentioned to me when I started in real estate, it's all about I suppose this is a life lesson as well, just being able to walk down the street and hold your head high and never have to worry about who you're going to run into will serve you so well. The other thing on work ethics, in terms of working hard, look, is there work-life balance? I don't think, I don't know. Look, I'm, I'm 50. I'm a lot better at it now than I used to be. That is for sure. I think like anything, when you're obsessed and you're obsessive about success and getting where you want to go and you love what you do and it's not work, naturally, it's easy to work long, long hours. Um, I think in real estate in particular, it's, it is hard. Um, you've got to work hard. You've got to work hard. You've got to work harder than the next guy or girl. You got to be up earlier. You got to be making those extra calls. You know, you got to be working on the weekends in commercial, calling your clients. You know, you don't have to, but you know. And if you're a residential agent, really, it's a seven day job. You know, it's just it's just how it is, and it's just like being a professional athlete. If you want to be the best at it, be obsessed, live and breathe it, learn everything there is to know, read books, attend courses, just be a sponge, and just. You need to learn, you need to learn more. Unless, you know, I've said this before in one of my posts, we're just no different to plants. If we want to thrive, we need to grow. So feed yourself 
and just be a student of your chosen field, asset class, geographical area, and just be the king or queen of that space. And on the second area of work ethics I wanted to cover, um, look, working hard, like anything, for me, I've worked really hard. And like a lot of people in any industry, I actually don't consider it work because I love it so much. And I actually have to be sort of, you know, to focus on not working, you know, right up until the early evening. And if you love it, yes, it's, it's, there's, there's a lot of hard work. And if you want to be better than the next person, you've got to put in the extra hours, but the fruits are there. And the greatest thing about real estate, there's no ceiling. You, it's a direct, it's a direct reward for the investment you make in yourself and the work that you put in. So go hard and get into it. It's a wonderful industry and um, the sky is really limitless. And it's, that's the same for any industry. It's the same for being successful in sport. You just have to be the leader. And to be the leader, you need to work harder than the next person. Simple. But when you love it, it's not really work anyway. So perfect. A last point. I've mentioned this before. And this is multi-industry, multi-profession. You've got to have a plan. You've got to have a daily plan in what you want to achieve that day. You want to have a plan of having X number of phone calls or just achieving, work it, work it out, work out what it is you want to achieve for the year, break it down. Okay, so for me to do that, I need to do this and I need to do this. And it's just, it's not rocket science. That's the other great thing. It's not rocket science. It's just discipline and it's having a plan and it's being really, really disciplined. Some of the greatest agents I've seen are the most disciplined people about every day. It's being relentless in following the plan, following the plan, have the vision, trust the process and just follow the bouncing ball. So thanks for listening. Love this subject. They're my tips to be successful in commercial real estate. Some multi-industry crossover tips there. Enjoy, get into it and I'll uh, see you next time.